Hey, what's going on, troops? Welcome to Gen Dick Commando. My name's Ryan, and I'm a former Royal Marine from the United Kingdom, Great Britain. And today, guys, we're going to be reacting to the top five most advanced army robots in the world. Okay, so we're talking about tanks, robot dogs, unmanned vehicles, military robots, all of that good stuff. All the things that we want to know about, all right? All the things that I certainly wanted to know about when I was in the military. However, things have came a long way in such a short period of time. I've been out the Marines for just shy of three years, and... And things have changed so much, guys. Okay, that's why I've got my application to go back in as a reservist to hopefully get my hands on some of this good kit, guys. But before we get into this reaction today, please smash that like, share, and subscribe button. You are supporting a veteran in myself by doing so, guys. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Check out all of my other links in the description as well, troops. Okay, all my other um, social media and stuff like that. So I'd really appreciate it. But without further ado, let's just get straight into this one, yeah? Military experts say that in 10 years, the armed forces will be at 30 to 50% robotic. Already in the next decade, missiles will be flying too fast for humans to make important defensive actions on their own. Drones will attack in self-guided swarms and soldiers will control columns of robots. A lot of this is becoming a reality right now. So see the top five most advanced military robots and robotic systems of the present and future. Like it, subscribe to the channel and let's go. Why well, run that, guys? I always put the links to the original videos in the description. If you want to check them out after this video, go show them some love. Pro robots, yeah, buddy. Coming in at fifth place, China's Jari USV, a 20-ton impact robot vehicle designed for anti-submarine warfare, striking ground targets and engaging air targets. Test of the robots began last year. It is 15 meters long and has a displacement of 20 tons. The Jari USV is capable of speeds of up to 42 knots and has a cruising range of 1,000 kilometers. The 42 knots is what we, we believe it to go at, all right? But, you know, as most governments and militaries will, um, I, I understand how they kind of work. They'll never really release true figures. It'll probably be able to do a lot more than that, okay, guys? The Jari USV is equipped with an electro-optical sensor on top of the superstructure, phased smart antenna, and sonar. Depending on the combat mission, the boat can be armed with an 8-cell vertical launcher, torpedo launcher, missile launcher, and a remotely controlled combat module with a 30mm automatic gun. Right, so that's that's pretty damn impressive, guys. All right, That's pretty, pretty good. I mean, that's going to take some stuff out, and to be fair... If you see that coming towards you with nobody actually piloting it, it's a, I think it's a like remote control, isn't it? You know, you're going to be scared, aren't you? Let's face it. The robot can operate in fully autonomous mode or be controlled remotely from the command ship. Here in fourth place is Ghost Robotics K9 Dog Robot. Right, this is the one that I was actually hoping was going to be on here, and I'm glad it has. I think this one came out like four or five years ago, I think I first seen it. But it's came a long way apparently since then. And this this thing's actually, you know, battle ready, battle, battle ready to go. It's an amazing bit of kit, okay? The US Army began introducing robots. Ghost Robotics Vision 60, nicknamed K9, is already patrolling military bases in Florida to enhance security and surveillance. That is amazing. The 325th Security Forces Squadron is in charge of base security. And they said that the robots are weatherproof, four-legged, unmanned patrol drones with two-way communications and high-tech sensors that cost about $100,000. By February wow. of 2012... So, you know, people think, oh, wow, that's, a re that's really expensive. I mean, it costs, you know, much more than that to train a fully qualified Royal Marines commando. Now, yes, the versatility of having the human on your side is um, arguably better but in terms of durability longevity and um, and you know the fear factor as well look at that thing for a hundred thousand pound it's ready to go off the shelf i think it's a bargain guys okay i think it is 21 four robo dogs will be deployed around the base perimeter where they can either move autonomously or be controlled by an operator through a virtual reality headset the robots are designed for stability on any terrain and have reduced mechanical complexity, reducing costs, but increasing reliability and maneuverability. Operating time on one charge is seven hours. And although the robot dogs don't bite, a safety mechanism will be triggered if you try to damage them. And that mechanism is not yet known as they have not disclosed it. The canines. 
right so a safety mechanism so i'm guessing because of its how small it is it's not going to be like a weapon system it's probably going to be something like a sound or a pulse or a wave all right that's going to put you off getting anywhere near it you're going to want to go away okay yeah, but it's definitely going to be something that's massively irritating to to the human ears or to the human nose believe it or not will be an extra set of eyes and ears when processing large amounts of data and strategic points throughout the Air Force Base. Right, that's pretty cool. I would like to have one of them on my team. What do you think? Would you like to have that on your team? Number three, an entire family of armed robot tanks is also planned to be adopted by the U.S. Army. The project is called Mission Enabler, Technologies Demonstrator, and provides for the creation of combat robots in three classes at once in light, medium, and heavy. They're capable of shooting, interfering with enemy communications, putting smoke screens in front of soldiers moving forward, and performing other dangerous combat tasks. The smallest vehicle, the Robotic Combat Vehicle Light, or RCVL, will be a wheeled vehicle weighing less than 10 tons and armed with light but powerful weapons such as the Javelin Anti-Tank Missile Launcher. Right, so the Javelin, for instance, is um, a heavy weapons kind of, you know, uh, utilization in the in, in the military, mainly the infantry. Uh, infantiers will carry these things, all right? They're man-packable. So if you think about it, this tank, although it weighs 10 tons, it can do something that, uh, that, that humans can do, i.e. carry it, but it'll um, have a, a longer range. Uh, it'll be able to get into positions quicker, potentially, and... It'll be able to put it, itself in in more danger, you know. Humans, you know, we we limited in in that sense. You're not going to stand right in front of a tank, but guess what? A tank can stand in front of a tank, um, and I think that's pretty damn good. All right, I would like to think that we could utilize something like that. The RCV medium, with nearly the same dimensions, will be twice as heavy to accommodate heavier weapons, armor, and tracked gear. Right, that looks scary. I'm not going to lie. That looks. That looks naughty. The robot will be equipped with a medium cannon, probably the 30 to 40 millimeter range, or several anti-tank guided missiles. And last in this group is the robotic combat vehicle heavy, weighing up to 30 tons and will be the main battle tank without a crew. It will be armed with large caliber direct fire guns capable of destroying tanks such as the Chinese Type 99 and the Russian T-14 Armada. So that's not uh, not to be messed with, guys, okay? The only thing I worry about these robotic kind of um, equivalents is when when technology fails, human prevails, so to speak. And uh, the human element in this, if they're not, you know, on board, it'll, they'll be at camp. So I think I can see these things going down. Technology always fails us when we most need it. And uh, you'll always need a human kind of contingent as a backup plan and... Uh, I don't think these things will be taken over as quick as we think. We'll still need a human element. But, um, yeah, I mean, watch this space. You know, these things are the future and uh, very closely becoming our present, guys. For now, the robots will be controlled remotely by an operator without the use of radar to reduce the machine's visibility. But in the future, control will be transferred to artificial intelligence and work in this direction is actively being carried out by the U.S. today. Right, that's... Wow, that's a different subject, guys. Hang on a minute. I need to think about this. If you watch anything on Elon Musk and artificial intelligence, then you should be scared to death about it, okay? And the fact that these things will eventually be run on artificial intelligence alone. Wow. Okay, now, I guess that opens up the question. What happens if the artificial intelligence um, decides to teach itself to do whatever it wants against human will, all right? Morality. I don't know. Can artificial intelligence have a moral compass? I don't think so. Here in second place, robot tanks are acting on the principle of the Wolfpack with German company Rheinmetall, which released an animation the other day demonstrating how they operate. The swarm of robotic tanks moves and identifies targets using artificial intelligence, while the decision to fire is made by an operator. The Rheinmetall Swarm consists of a squad of armed reconnaissance vehicles and a camera system with a remote-controlled machine gun, which are inserted to the combat area by helicopter. The robots can also carry multiple launchers to launch exploding kamikaze drones. To back up the animation, 
Ryan Mattel unveiled a new reconnaissance combat module for its Mission Master robot platform. The module's payload is mounted on a 3.5 meter long extendable mast with tilt mechanism that allows the vehicle to use the system on the move or from flaps. The stuffing consists of two digital radars, a 360 degree camera, a laser range finder, a designator and a field ranger light combat system. The Mission Master wow. weighs 1,100 kilograms, including its batteries, and carries up to 600 kilograms of payload. The platform is an amphibious vehicle capable of swimming at 5 kilometers per hour. The robot can operate for 8 hours or travel for 140 to 160 kilometers at 20 kilometers per hour with fully... That is, that is really, really cool. I, I really like that, guys. Let me know what you think. I really, really like that. ...fully charged batteries. However, in recent operational tests, the vehicle lasted more than 24 hours without recharging because wow. most of the time the power consumption rarely reaches peak levels. Friends, while we're here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It really motivates us to make even more interesting releases. Hey, he took the words right out of my mouth, guys. If you don't mind hitting that subscribe if you're brand new here, boom, you'll help me right out. And here we are in first place with the Tempest Future Fighter. The Tempest Future Fighter is a next-generation air combat system that should be ready by 2035. It's being... 2035? That is... How can they even put that date on it to be that long? I don't get it. They're doing that as a stooge for the militaries to go, oh, look, this is not going to be ready until then, to uh, slow down the arms race for it. That's just me thinking, and that's just the way I think, guys. Maybe they've already got this technology right now. What do you think? Let me know in the comments developed by the UK Ministry of Defence in conjunction with a host of technology companies and institutes. Right, I am surprised that the UK military is, uh, or the UK Ministry of Defence is the ones that are developing this because we've got no budget, alright? The military budget is absolutely crap in the United Kingdom compared to what it used to be anyway. The sixth generation fighter will incorporate several new technologies including invisibility, direct energy weapons and hypersonic weapons. Tempest, with elements of artificial intelligence, will be able to fly autonomously and use drone swarm technology to control them. Another tech being developed in Tempest is the ability to interact on the battlefield, exchanging sensor data and messages to coordinate an attack or defend with other robots. Tempest will have an adaptive cycle engine and a virtual cockpit displayed on the pilot operator headset. A generator has also been developed for the aircraft, providing unprecedented levels of electricity. A key feature of the drone will be the radar technology with data processing capacity equivalent to downloading 9 hours of HD video per second or all the internet traffic of a major city. Right, that is one of the most phenomenal things I've ever seen in my life. I love aircraft, that just blew the socks off it. Today, the military is deciding whether the weapons of the future should attack independently or whether the control should still belong to humans. For the military, this is not a question of ethics, but speed of response and thus survival in future wars. Who do you think should be left with the decision to destroy targets? Let us know down in the comments. Subscribe to the Pro Robots channel and be... You know what, guys? Actually, while, while we're on that one, um, I think... I mean, I just want to answer answer straight away for this one i think that the human element once you take that away there's no going back and i think it's a very dangerous route to kind of go down if i'm honest with you um what do you think i don't think we should take away that human element i think if there's anything bad or good going to be done you know it should have a human interaction you know if we're allowing artificial intelligence to control things how far do we go with it okay it sounds like a terminator movie doesn't it but I really enjoyed that one, guys. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I, I reacted to that one. If you you like that video and you got any questions you want to ask me, drop a comment below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Go check out my other channel, Gen Dick Gaming. The link is in the description. Um, we gaming on there back again. All right, we, we did our first game back yesterday. It did really well. So if you want to go and check out alternate content by myself and just have some fun and hang out, go click on there, troops. Okay, we nearly had a thousand subscribers at the time of this video. So you might be the thousandth subscriber, guys. But other than that, I'll see you next time, troops. Take it easy. Bye-bye.